Good day, this is Ron McFarland and our topic today is controlled unclassified information. This is an overview of what CUI is, so it's not a comprehensive look. So if you're looking at some just generally what is CUI, this is the place. More details, I'll provide some resources that can be helpful for you. Anyway, some of our topics, a legal notification, uh, the purpose of the presentation. I also talk about CFR, which is the Code of Federal Regulations, just briefly, uh, CFR 32, good faith and CUI, OPSEC, operations security, and CUI, what is OPSEC, what's that context, CUI categories, some general categories which include defense, CUI, export controlled CUI, and proprietary business information CUI. Uh, the FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, I mentioned that because there are some implications, some concerns when people are dealing with CUI and FOIA. Uh, CUI requirements, generally it's the protection of CUI and what we do if a breach occurs or if somehow that data is exfiltrated, lost, etc. Uh, the notes on context and best practices, some of my observations when dealing with manufacturers and suppliers that work with CUI. And then I also finally wrap it up with some references that may be useful to you in your exploration of you know, additional CUI items. Legal notification. Nothing in this presentation is legal advice, whether it's written, spoken, expressed, or implied on these slides. You should confer with your qualified lawyer for any legal advice. Nothing in this presentation should be construed as an endorsement of a product or a service, whether, again, if it's written, implied, spoken, expressed, etc. There's, I don't sell anything. I am just doing this to provide information to our community. So, and with that in mind, please give me a thumbs up if you found this presentation useful. Uh, I will also share at the end of this presentation my email if you want to drop me a note and we can talk about this as well. The purpose of this presentation and we're talking about CUI. In general, uh, CUI is information that should be controlled and stored in a consistent manner with federal requirements and guidance. I do mention the NIST SP800-171R2. Also, consider uh, just as a loose, broad category, not a loose category, but a broad category, CUI as sensitive information. It's certainly not classified information. Classified information takes on a whole nother level, and that's a little more embodied in the NIST SP Special Publication 853. So my focus is more on the DFARS NIST 800-171R2, um, that special sensitive CUI information that we all as contractors, as suppliers, have to deal with when we're working with the federal government, rightfully so. So storage, transmission, the printing, the distribution, the dissemination of COI, all of those uh, aspects of COI need to be protected. Now I mentioned COI and CFR, Code of Federal Regulations. CFR is, if you will, the legal hooks uh, NIST is how to implement those in a real way. So CFR uh, um, defines CUI. CUI is information that the government creates or processes or that an entity such as a manufacturer creates or processes on behalf of the government. I'll give you an example of each. The government may provide you with specifications for a part. All of those items would be considered, those specs would be considered CUI, so you have to protect that. However, in the process of working with those specifications, if you create any other items that the government perhaps needs back, that could be considered 
CUI. As an example, I worked with an electronics manufacturer. Um, the government sent through impedance, resistance, and other um, electronic measurements for this one supplier to work with. The supplier also generated other impedance, resistance measurements, measurements as well, uh, capacitance measurements that they provided back to the government. So in that creation, that was also CUI, so they needed to protect that as well. Because the identification of uh, the CUI can help uh, our adversaries create kind of a profile, a picture of what pieces and parts are being developed and how those fit into a whole portfolio of uh uh, something that is being developed for uh, DOD, let's say the F-35, a lot of pieces and parts in that aspect, if you will. So uh, for manufacturing and the supply chain, CUI is often described or defined in the contract by the contracting officer. If it's still a little bit squishy, get a hold of the contracting officer, the compliance officer, if you will. Now, good faith and CUI. Oftentimes, this, this is a double-edged sword right here. Good faith and CUI. We might receive, as the manufacturer, information about CUI, and we might question, is the information that's marked as CUI really CUI? If, it, if we determine that we don't think it really is CUI, we first need to contact our representative, our contracting officer, and tell them that, him or her that we may have a disagreement with is an item CUI or not. In the meantime, we're still obligated in good faith to maintain that CUI information, whether it's questioned or not, as CUI protections, if you will. Also, on the other side, if we see information that's coming through that should be marked as CUI, as best practice and good faith uh, arbiters, if you will, uh, we are obligated to protect that information on determining is made. An item is indeed not CUI. The good faith laws, the overarching of good faith and CUI. SEC, Operation C. Now, Operation Security is it's specific called out in some of the NIST documents. It is referred to in other NIST documents. But Operation Security is kind of the when we're protecting OPSEC and mitigates risks to the organizational operation by reviewing the organization's options through the eyes of the adversaries. So when I go and look at the organization's network, I not only look at it, oh, is it efficient? Does it work well for the organization? But I look at it from the adversarial standpoint. Can I hack into it? Once I'm in, can I escalate my privileges? So when a control set like the NIST 171, not just simply running through a checklist, it's looking in the OPSEC viewpoint, the OPSEC eyes from the adversarial's eyes to see how that network or that information system or that system, et cetera, can be compromised. Also, by using OPSEC methodologies applied to the organizational information systems and network, we can better identify the critical information, analyze threats and vulnerabilities, analyze and assess adversarial risk, and implement good cybersecurity measures. So really, we look at OPSEC in at our, throughout the whole organization. We look at where we store CUI, who has access to it, how it's transmitted, where it's printed, how it's stored, whether it's a physical document or a, a data store. And we look at all those aspects in the eyes of the adversary and how we can basically take that data and use it as an adversary. So in context of OPSEC and CUI, it's really looking at CUI from a really protected measure by looking at how an adversary views CUI. There's three different categories 
generally of CUI, defense, export control, and proprietary business information. Let's touch on those quickly. Defense CUI, sometimes it's referred to as controlled technical information. And just to be honest and straightforward, um, this is where I think some people get a little bit, it, this CUI definition tends to be a little bit muddy. It's because they're throwing um, under the larger umbrella CUI a few other definitions that cut at slightly different angles. But CUI, uh, that is defense CUI, is often referred to as CTI, controlled uh, technical information. And this refers to that information that relates to technical information with military or space application that is subject to controls, access, use, reproduction, modification, performance display, release, disclosure, or dissemination. And there's a DOD has uh, a list of that criteria, how do you control that? How do you disseminate that information uh, around CTI, even beyond the overarching definition of what CUI is? So CTI is one of the aspects. And uh, four of the um, items regarding dissemination it includes things like the authorized audience, the reason for control, the date of determination, there could be an expiration date or a to and from date, and who the controlling office is for that CTI. All of that gets into a much deeper conversation. I do provide an additional link at the end of this presentation, and for the video component, I'll put it in the notes and comments for the video as well for additional training uh, that is offered by the DOD. Another aspect is export controlled CUI. Sometimes it's referred to as expert, I'm sorry, export controlled research, EXPT as well. So many manufacturers and suppliers are under export controls. Uh, usually those items are highly sensitive uh, and they contain information that if left unmanaged or insufficiently secured, uh, an attacker, a nation state, could get that information and use it as an adversary of ours. They include such items, could be dual use items, that may be uh, munitions, arms, weapons, sensitive nuclear technology, other items like that, they would have a systemic uh, implication for us as a nation should that be released to our adversaries. So that export control. I also think of another side area, the ITAR controls as well, kind of blend into that. A third aspect of CUI is proprietary business information. Uh, so oftentimes you might see it listed as P-R-O-P-I-N, general proprietary business information. And it includes such things as R&D, research and development, the product designs, uh, performance specifications, uh, financial information, all that type of proprietary information can be very revealing to how a project is being executed throughout all the um, organizations that are supplying pieces and parts and support for the DOD. So that proprietary business information is a third aspect as well. FOIA, Freedom of Information Act. Now I have listed on this slide uh, the particular uh, code for the FOIA. It is a federal law that defines agency records that are subject to public disclosures. It outlines mandatory disclosure procedures. 
and also defines the nine exemptions. And not being an attorney, uh, just in general concept, CUI follows or falls under uh, those nine exemptions. So if you're dealing with CUI in general, this is where that legal advice needs to come from your attorney uh, based on the CUI you're managing. In general, CUI falls under the exemptions of FAA. So how you protect it, how it's dominated, it, this has an implication on the CUI in your organization. See protection requirements. I mentioned the NIST 800-171R2. That whole set of 110 controls is suitable.